Compositing is the final stage of creating visual effects. This is where everything comes together. The render layers, image planes, real life footage, and the last tweaks to enhance the aesthetics of the shots, elevating it all to the next level. Most of the time when we look at VFX breakdowns, we see the compositors work. They layer the footage on top of each other, add color grading, atmosphere, lens flare, replace green screens with CG, etc. So essentially, 90% of the behind-the-scenes videos you find is about the last 10% of the entire process. Interestingly enough, when it comes to the CG elements, most of what compositing is comprised of is destroying the footage to the point where it actually looks good, meaning that the pure render is just too crisp and perfect and unrealistic. So we add motion blur, grain, lens, distortion, defocus, and everything that imitates how a real camera would have recorded the footage. First of all, let's take a look at what we actually rendered and what I mean by image planes. This is what I see when I open up a rendered frame in Photoshop. In the bottom right, you can see that within this one file, we have multiple images. These are our image planes or AOVs. Depending on what we want to include in our renders, we can have many, many layers in here. But for now, I kept it nice and simple. The top one is the beauty pass, meaning the actual image we rendered. The bottom four are the AOVs, a combination of which makes up the beauty pass. So here we have separated out the direct and indirect specular reflections, as well as the direct and indirect diffuse reflections. And if I add these together, then you can see that they produce the exact same output as the beauty pass. But why would we need all that? Well, because people in compositing want to be in control of every single aspect of the render so they can modify individual elements. This last one is the Z-Depth. This map gives us information about how far individual objects are from the camera. You can see that different distances have different shades of grey assigned to them. We can then use this to apply focal depth, progressively blurring out the background or to add atmosphere. There are many more types of AOVs, but this is enough for right now. Similarly to Houdini, Nuke is also a node-based editor. The first thing I do in Nuke is extract the image planes from the footage, then merge them back together. Now I can modify individual AOVs. Then I layered the renders on top of each other before moving on to modifying them. I added the reflections and shadows to the ground. The reflection is just a pure specular pass, while for the shadows I needed a shadow matte pass, which is an alpha pass. This is a mask that is white where the shadows are visible. I can then use that to apply darkness where the shadows should be. From here on, I am just trying to improve the overall look of the shot. I'm giving the lightning some glow and increasing its reflection on the ground. Now, I am increasing only the specular reflections of the hammer. And here comes the depth of field by adding some distance-based blur. Because I rendered the ground with a depth pass, I can use that to blur the background as well. Another thing we always have is motion blur, so I added that on top as well. And now we can take a look at the difference between the raw render and the composited shot. A quick test, and that looks alright, but not quite finished. Filming something as bright as lightning would likely result in some lens flare, so let's add that. I searched for the points where there were quite a few flashes of lightning and added the lens flares there. I reduced the brightness of the background and lowered its saturation to darken the mood, then did the same with the hammer. Finally came the camera lens related effects, such a grain and lens distortion. All real-life cameras have a fisheye distortion effect on the images. The closer we get to the edge, the more it stretches, but the CG cameras are completely flat. So to combat that, we first undistort the real-life footage, then add the CG elements, and then redistort everything altogether. Now let's render it and take a look. That's as good as it will get for now. There is room for improvement, but there always is. You are never done with a project, you just don't work on it anymore. So here we go, the complete rundown of this footage. I hope you enjoyed this miniseries.